All right, so last time we left off on the motor, we were looking at something like this. However, there are a few components that I see in the image that are missing that we might as well go ahead and attempt to add. So I'm going to press Control Shift S and we're going to just increment this file by one and then save it. So that way we are now working on another level and we don't have to disturb or disrupt the level that we we're working with previously. So this piece in particular is the one that we're going to be working with. And one of the things that's going to need to be dealt with is the mirroring. So let's go ahead and apply the mirror and I'm just going to press Alt X and we're just going to hit it with a bisect mod splitting it in half again. And for this whole area, we are just going to let's see, look at our image and we'll just press E S and scale it, bring it out. And since we're kind of visually approximating it just by eye, we got to just look at our images that we have and just see what we're able to do. Let's go ahead and solely our bevel. So we're doing subdivision conversions as we're working. Same with this area. We want to go ahead and add some loops to protect that. And so we're at least on the level of getting started, but there is so much work that is left to do with this particular piece that it is daunting. So let's come out of local mode and just look at what we have and look at the piece that we're about to begin dealing with. So I see a circular piece, an extrusion, another circular piece. Someone mentioned about uh, Topaz AI Gigapixel. I actually have that installed, but it doesn't matter um, whether the images are blurry or not blurry. I mean, that's just life. You give me an image, it's gonna be blurry at some zoom level. But let us just press Shift A and we're going to insert a cylinder. And instead of a 32 rounder, we're going to go with a 24. You know, usually I go with a 32, 32 rounder, but it's not absolutely necessary. And just looking at our image, we're just going to try to extrapolate what we're seeing here. So I see something like this. And as I look at it, I see it getting more and more daunting you know that's the thing about this particular part is it's just um it's definitely a challenge and i wasn't expecting to actually model as much of this as i did but as close as we are we might as well finish it because once we're done with everything that's painful all that's left is everything that is trivial so just pressing e and extruding and we'll come back and deal with threads you know i have an intimate relationship with threads now that's one thing that this whole Topo study adventure this month has taught me is how to make threads. I've learned a lot about threads. One day I'll thread it right. So maybe something like that so far. And really we don't even need all these other components to be showing at this time. We just need that, which kind of reminds me of um, Danzo's face mask from Never mind. I gotta stop talking about Naruto in tutorials. I'm seriously not a Naruto fan, so you know, miss me with that. Hey man, what you think about Naruto right now? I don't. Also, it's Baruto now. Those young whippersnappers don't know how good they had it. All right, look, I'm getting on a tangent again. Let's just apply our scale, and we're just gonna grab these edges, and let's just press Control B and bevel. We could press C in order to clamp it and meet them in the middle, and we'll just roll in a few segments maybe maybe three segments and we can set our profile to 0.5 just for this and as i'm working i'm listening to music in my ear still reviewing music cds by this artist named feist more than likely you'll check her out and find out that she's terrible but i, I like to listen to uh different types of music i just cycle back and forth between sad alternative and sad um, alternative sang by women. I was about to say something else, but I guess it's still alternative if it's sang by women, even though the themes are slightly different. So continuing on, I also see a piece from here that's like bridging over to this piece. I mean, images are the worst. They just show you so much that you probably did not want to see. But we're going to have some fun with this because... I've been getting a few messages on Twitter of people attempting the subdivision merging challenge and failing terribly because of the loops being too close together. You know, if you if you show me an image that you did, then I assume that you're asking me for my thoughts on it. So 
Yeah, you got to not have your loops so close together or else subdivision isn't going to be able to shine the way that, you know, you would expect it to. So this is what we're just putting together. And keep in mind, this is all just cylinders. It's just basic shapes. But the next thing is this little three chain. So let us just shift A, add in a cylinder. And I'm going to take this cylinder in local mode. And I'm just thinking on my feet. Possibly even making mistakes that I will not be aware of until the future, but something like that and then Let's see. How do we want to do this? Bring it over here and then mirror merge it again You know we could try getting it absolutely accurate But I, I never bother, you know, it'll probably drive most viewers crazy but I will just get in there and just be as close to a circle as possible and just see if I can get away with it. Not the most uh, optimal way to work, but just the way that I work personally. Circles are just equidistant um, rings. So I don't know, I always play with the meaning of that. Let's press Alt X and hit it with a bisect mod. So that way, whenever we grab this other side and we begin moving it over, it actually moves the other side as well. And so I see this actually merging into the piece that we have going on already, this piece. And we started it off in the center so that way it would just be very easy for us to get it in position. Let's set our origin here so when we scale it actually scales from the correct location. And I'm thinking something like that. I'll more likely take a pause and find some images that actually reflect our goals and values a little bit more acutely. But for now, let's just, and this is going to be the merge from heck. Just saying like this, at the time that I was doing the video, I was like, ooh, I should end it. <laughs> I should end this before I have to get in here and deal with the part that's going to open a can of who's your daddy. And so today, we are here, like Stone Cold Steve Austin, ready to open a six pack of Who's Your Daddy on the Smash. And I'm telling you, the Mesh is going to open it on us, not the other way around. You know, there's. I wish that we could get the drop on this Mesh and just get it absolutely perfect, but that would require intimate blueprints of what it is that we're dealing with, but. Like I said, we're just approaching this uh, from a just modeling strategy perspective. So we're just really having fun with it. Not so much going for a replication that you can model and print out and have your very own Ryobi pressure washer at home. But let's get some images that actually indicate more closely what's going on here. So let us bring over our next image, which is this one, replacing that other one that was just a little too blurry. And here we can actually see what is going on. So this cylinder definitely meets with this piece. It connects like so. This piece definitely comes forward. And I'm thinking something like that. I mean, it's a really hard guess. And every shortcut that I take at this point really assists me with the painful merger that is inevitably, inevitably coming had a um, snafu with words there for a minute. And for this area, I'm also going to make a controversial decision. I'm going to press QOT to bring in a cube and let us turn equalize off. So that way it's actually the correct size. Equalize comes in handy for times where you just want to equalize things, you know, uh, get in there and try it. It's the best advice I can give you. And just looking at this thing, I would say that it doesn't really go much further than these three posts. And we see it actually being perpendicular with this view. So let us rotate it so it's actually correct. And this thing is like in the middle point, but it's actually right here according to what I'm looking at, like um, a lot of guesswork going on, but 
you know, when it comes to merge time, it'll be merge time. Also, may not want to go too high with it because I don't see it in, in any of the other pictures. So this thing is probably just an indication. In fact, we don't even see it on the other side. So really it's something like that making it slightly more painful. I mean, this shape is going to not be very fun whenever it comes to merging them all together, but we're in this to win it. So the next thing is I almost want to grab all of these pieces and just move it back on the Y, which I know controversial. And we're just looking to make sure those are not touching. Otherwise that would be problematic. And you know, I think that is actually close enough for us to move on to the next step. However, I do want to bring up box cutter and let's just uh, set this to 24 as the same counts we've been using. And we're just going to bring out a make circle. And for this make, let us just array it over to the other side. And we see that, you know, our rotation is an absolute. So let's apply our rotation and we see that our rotation definitely is not absolute. So we'll move that over and just scale it on the Z just so we don't have any penetration with that area. And let's mirror this to the other side. So this is the piece that we aspire to create. This is the piece that we don't even need to be looking at. And so from here, we really got to ask ourselves, do we want to get in and begin merging this all together and then solving it for subdivision? And you know why you came here today is to watch me suffer. So let's control S, save the file, and let's just begin making some mistakes. So I'm going to first Boolean these two together and then just begin adding them all to this piece that is separate. So it's just one big super piece. So nothing crazy so far. In fact, this piece is all on its own. In fact, if we light parent, we can then move it around and we see that this is all its own collection or its own uh, conglomeration of pieces we've union together. So let us move this slightly up and let's also make sure that auto smooth is on just so things look good at this particular moment while we're working and let us you know i was going to union it all together and then we would start turning it into subdivision but instead we should just convert everything to a mesh go in local mode and look at all of our areas so as as always i have my select boundary loops map to shift tilde so when i press shift tilde i can see my boundaries and we want to just get in and first you know remove any degenerative points which cleans up things a little bit. And then we're just getting in and we're playing the game of games, the subdivision conversion game, the ultimate game. And hopefully the purpose of these videos is not to, um, you know, present modeling in a daunting way. If so, you need to go watch someone else um, a, little, a little more basic, but you know, the goal is to provide some strategies so that you know, whatever part it is you have to make, regardless of the level of information you have, you're able to still work with and even convert any type of mesh, even a mess like what we're dealing with into a suitable enough subdivision mesh. So let's just shift tilde, look at what our loops are looking like. And this area is also a near miss. So subdivide, merge it last. And where's this is the last area with holes. One, two, three, merge it last. This one also same thing. Let's shift tilde and we have no more holes. So at this point we will go ahead and cavity search our mesh by just perusing what our mergers look like. So this is what we're actually getting as a result of our merger. So first turn through this tunnel and it's just a uh, F word um, that we were given. So we're just looking at it on the outside, looking at it on the inside 
and we realize that all this geometry that's being shown in front of us isn't actually supposed to be there. So once again, we've triggered a can of who's your daddy whenever it comes to the exact Boolean. But for this reason, that's why it's important to get in and actually look at your mesh and your result because there's a chance that when you're using exact that your meshes aren't even manifold. So let's just shift till to grab everything again. And let's um, get inside this area and give it one more look see, just making sure everything's just fine using the um, 3D mouse. And you see that when I pull it in, it kind of limits the amount that I'm able to go. If I press F4 and I go to my preferences, because I'm using something called a end off mouse, I can check on, let's see, was it? Um, helicopter mode, let's see if that one's it. Uh, I believe we can make it even freer. So let's give that a try. Here we go, navigation free. And let's try it again. All right, so now I'm able to fully examine the interior of this model. And you probably think I'm just being weird but I'm telling you, like when you have these interior faces and they're not dealt with or checked upon, they will wreak havoc on your topology and your ability to have flows go around continuously. So while it's also, you know, kind of fun, look at this area, you know, what, what area is that? That is this area. Let's go back in and look at it again. And we are just going to make some decisions while we're looking at this on the inside. Merge at center, merge at center. And something like that. So let us continue on with our subdivision conversion process because this is going to take a moment and we have no time to waste. So we're just bringing in loops and just forging our connections you know, typical boilerplate stuff. In fact, we could have probably solved for subdivision right before this step on each individual piece and then union them together. And then we could have just been solving uh, unassociated junction areas. But instead, we are having to get in and deal with the topology. I almost want to add another loop going across, but just looking at it, it's so sparse that we might as well respect what we have going on with it. So we're just going to grab these edges and just dissolve them from existence. They don't need to exist. We'll hit them with a Hakai. I guess I've used all these anime terms in my tutorials. You, know, you guys probably don't even know what I'm talking about. Um, so let's grab these two and you know, keep in mind that when it comes to the curvature, that I'm sliding geometry away, even though that geometry is integral to the particular area, because whenever subdivide hits it, we want there to be some, some room for it to push the geo out nicely, because subdivision has its strengths, right? And if we have the geometry too tightly clustered, we've defeated the point of this entire exercise. So I probably sound like a jerk when I'm like, yeah, tightening the loops uh, kind of defeats the purpose, but it's true. You know, when the loops are too tight, you have basically uh, got a completely different result. Like anyone can just crease all the hard edges that batter and get it to work. But the, the true art of subdivision conversion is making it look like it was designed for subdivision, even though it was a conversion that's probably the easiest way I can explain it, at least my, my philosophies on it. So let us just form these connections and we're just sliding and analyzing and thinking about what we're doing. We'll slide this one, but we'll press E and then F because we do want a flow happening in this area that's going to be assistive later on, something like that. But for now, we also want a flow that's actually assisting what we have in the now. So something like that. And then over here is where things begin to get a little bit more mysterious. So 
when it comes to connect correcting corners, especially corners that collide with a surface like we're seeing here, it is, you know, it's just a, a luck thing. You know, you get in there, you try your best, and, you know, hopefully you learn something. As long as you're learning something, you're improving. But with every solve, I change it up a little bit. Almost to the point where it's not even worth uh, practicing for the videos unless I want to just improve my confidence with a particular accomplishment. But I, I'm still a, a big fan of of rehearsing tutorial content till it's perfect. Like there were a few things I wanted to do this month that I don't think I'll be able to get around to. I wanted to do a tutorial on modeling helicopters, but we'll save it for next year. So continuing on, we are just connecting points and consolidating areas, even though we are creating basically a mess but it'll make sense by the end. You know, when it comes to subdivision, it'll be pretty lenient because the areas that matter is, you know, the perimeters, the stuff that was mentioned in the previous content where I was talking about perimeters for tons of videos obsessively. It still is all about the perimeters. As long as you protect the important perimeters, you can almost get away with a little bit of murder, but keep in mind that subdivision, you know, once it catches up with what you're up to, you're gonna receive a bunch of knots on the head. So that is also part of life. You just take your knots. Also, it's beginning to get a little hot. So let me go ahead and adjust. All right, and continuing on, we are just going to grab points and slide them away. And something like that. And now for this area, we want to go ahead and protect the loop. And we're going to be doing this for the duration of this until we get to the conclusion. I think for the next event, I'm going to try significantly shorter videos where basically we, um, yeah, I was looking at the watch, the average watch time. And it made me realize that I should do videos that fit that, where we just blast through all of these processes. You know, even all of this that I'm doing, you know, person's playlist is so that in the future we can just blast through it, just fast forward through it, be like, hey guys, I went through this process, same process I always do. No need to talk about it. Let's just continue. And from there, it should allow, you know, you guys to get in and out very quickly on these videos. So let us finish this connection. And consolidating loops and just making hard decisions, you know, it's like, we're just looking at the geometry and just thinking, you know, what we want to do to solve this and this might not even be the best area to start but it's where we chose to start because once this works the whole shape kind of has a rhythm set for it that all we have to do is just maintain it and we will get to a successful resolution so for this do we want to actually tighten the way that we're seeing which is something like that is what I kind of see as the predictive flow but that also results in an additional point being created on a turn, which I'll refer to these type of things as turns, but we definitely don't want to complicate what we have going on there. All right, and there's two days left in this whole subdivision event, and then I will be happy to be leaving it behind again until it is needed. You know, the, the whole purpose of this was to show that, you know, subdivision definitely has a place even in a Boolean workflow. Even though the approach that I use with it is a little unorthodox, it definitely has its use for me. And using Booleans 
for years and years now, I've definitely found a place for them in my pipeline as well. And it's been quite beneficial. Um, you know, there are some people out there who are, you know, never bulls. You know, they're like, I will never ever use a bullion. You know, good luck with that. However, it does, um, there's some parts I feel that you can only model that way. Otherwise, how are you going to uh, be able to merge all of these um, very complex shapes um, using using cubes? And I mean, maybe you can. There's always a will and a way to do anything, especially if you're um, mental enough. So we move this, we see that this loop is going to need to connect with this area, which will create a double. And there's another one probably over here, but we just want to go ahead and give this our loop of reinforcement but not too much so that way we can just get in and let's grab this edge and I'm going to press control B in order to bevel it and we'll set the profile to one go back to A just so we can do a gentle push and let's grab this loop and just bring it down so that way we can actually merge with that and on this side we can also do the same let us perform a geo merge, removing 239 points. I don't even want to ask where those points were. Wait. Let's um, right click and choose remove doubles. And we see that this is just way too high. So something like that is actually a little more appropriate. But you know, you got to watch it with um, remove doubles. Sometimes you look at it, you're like, wow. You remove 500 points, good on you. Yeah, 500 of your best points. You know, it's like a um, religious event. You know, we just killed the firstborn and our, our Jews are running out of Egypt. I had to ponder that for a minute, but that's literally what happened in the Bible. Um, killed the firstborn, you know, Jews ran away. Not being racist, it's literally the Bible. So continuing on, we are going to just merge this point And for this, I'm just going to select these two points, press J to form a connection. Let's add another loop. And we actually want to snap to vertex, snapping it precisely with this area. And we can get rid of any redundant loops that are not going to help. So, you know, after all that work, what are we looking like for subdivision? Just kidding. We only did like 20 minutes of work, but let's say we subdivided it. Well, we're getting something like that. It looks absolutely terrible. So what if we brought in our buddy uh, triangulate? We came in, we put a triangulate on it, and then we tried to hit it with subdivision. We see that it holds together a little bit better, but it still isn't there yet. So let us just get back in here and just start working it while looking at the areas that actually matter. So for this, what do you think I'm gonna do? Do you think I'm gonna press Control T and Alt J? maybe but we see that that isn't going to work and that's because this edge is not lined up for basically what we call coincidence so let's look at this if we grow this and we just rotate it because it's just on an end gun right so we have all the flexibility in the world with it as far as rotating it because it's just sitting on clouds so now we can select it, press Control T, Alt J, and we're good to go. So that's just part of why you wanna have some sort of uh, polygon rules whenever you're working because it allows you to take advantage of such things like just using the same circles. You just know that your merge process will be a little bit easier. In fact, that is a little bit easier, but let's try to do better. So I'm going to remove I want to remove that loop, but I cannot. So let's look at it in top view. And everything else almost lines up, except that whatever is going on here should not be going on. Let's control T, Alt J, and we see that everything is perfect. So for this last piece, how do you think it's going to fare? Well, we see that we're not lined up with any one circle, so let's just 
try to line up at least with that one. From here, we will have to make some, some hard decisions. For example, we can fill this in and let's try just solving this area using control T and alt J and we see that there's just one degenerative edge. So we're gonna fill in all that matters and then we will deal with just that one little misnomer. GZ. And now we can begin working our web across to the other side. So just looking at this, thinking about what I want to do. Normally I would want to inset around this, but let's look at how subdivision handled it. So subdivision handled it like you would expect. And for this area, despite us putting so much work into it, there's still much more work to be done. In fact, we don't even have a continuous flow around that. So let's try that again. We want to press control X to make it a knife box. And let us press control B to bevel this and make this single edge too. And by bringing it up, we now have a flow happening in the middle. And all we have to do is just solve whatever's going on here to make this not go all the way around. But just like that, we've now got that part looking just a little bit better. And when it comes to these, of course, we just have to set our profile to one, bevel with a little bit of a boundary protection, and we're good to go. So let us continue on with our giant merger of Doom. Of course, exit box cutter because just pressing, uh, clicking and dragging while being in box cutter when you're trying to do a mesh operation will trigger box cutter, meaning that if you are doing a mesh operation, you don't need box cutter for that. Box cutter is an active tool. You wouldn't have bevel up while you're UVing because you run the risk of doing something risky with your geometry or it, maybe not even risky just strange so let's slide this away so we have a little bit of slack just thinking about what we want subdivision to look like and also let us just begin drawing our flow using the knife tool and I just see that this is way too many points going on but we can we can make this work the way that you're seeing me do it. We'll get in and we'll just solve all of these basic near misses. You know, we could even take those to their nearest destination, but we'll leave it where it is. So still pondering how we want to solve this because if we cause too much distortion, it will have issues with the subdivision solution. So we got to keep things fairly simple, but also flowing. These are things that I'm thinking about whenever I'm going through this process is how we can have it flow, but we can also keep the distortion and um, tension on the surface to a minimum because once you start having tension on the surface, it's a, you're fighting a different battle with subdivision. You've opened, you've opened those gates and once you open those gates on subdivision where you're fighting against it, it's never going to let you go. So let's just uh, make sure auto smooth is off. And we want to finish bringing this piece all the way to the back end, even though we're getting kind of experimental with it. But this is what looking at uh, CAD modeler or uh, CAD exports of geometry has taught me is that there's a little bit of slack to be had with dealing with these sort of geometric issues. I mean, CAD, pro CAD programs aren't sending out subdivision friendly geometry, but they would hold it together with just the most minimum of edges. And even looking at quad remeshers, sometimes I see how they solve for junctions and I'm just like, wow, that's a, that's a solve. That's a very linear 
very straight solve and it works you know the simplicity may get you farther with subdivision than all the um all the topology in the world but you know i only theorize like i said you shouldn't be watching me to learn about topology and modeling if anything my goal is just to um discuss strategies but i'm definitely no expert there's a plethora of people out there far better than me that are far more qualified to be talking about such topics so let us slide this in and we see that you know too much negotiation will cause some tension happening even though you know your first reaction is to try to simplify that and you know the goal isn't absolute perfection since perfection is would probably require that we completely redraw the mesh, but you know, just getting in there and looking at what we're doing as we're sliding around Geo, we can kind of see what our overall impact is going to be. And one thing I keep seeing as a pattern is that for these corners, we are going to have to cut it some slack and also finish making the connections because otherwise it's just not going to work out. If you look at the other side, it's looking fine pretty much everywhere where our topology is on point. But for these areas where we are just joining two very non-concurrent areas together, we have to be just a little bit more experimental with our solution just to see if there's a way that we can just slide around enough geo to really just get the surface to fall in line and not stand out you know that's really the thing we just don't want it to stand out because as a whole this whole piece will will be impressive all right and i'm getting obsessive you know it happens sometimes you look at a piece so long you start getting obsessive with it but we want to keep this party moving so for this area i'm going to press i to inset and we'll inset it about that much and let us grab this and form this connection and let us grab this and form this connection and we'll just press J J just to form these connections and you know the more geometry we have the more of a chance we're going to get a knot upside the head. And I was just seeing it happen where basically I was getting lumped like a Looney Tune. But by relaxing it a little bit and just simplifying, we see that we get a lot farther. And that's just a strange thing with subdivision is, you know, when it comes to junctions, sometimes I will just simplify it to the bare essentials just to survive for the day. So now that we have a loop going in this area, we can just press J to connect like so and if we wanted to we could add just one more loop but do we need that one more loop probably we can actually use it on the other side as well but for this area do we need two loops is a philosophical question the answer is yes we do need two loops you know you would go in and think I you know I'm just gonna get rid of that loop watch out little Wody got to got to think about these choices because they could they could very well be detrimental to your shape and what subdivision is going to give you because subdivision like I said it's the cruelest master but it is my first master it was, the, it was the first modifier that I ever got an intimate understanding with but you know once you start to really think about the amount of geometry that it get that it adds for insignificant things the more you realize that subdivision is super inefficient it's like it's like driving a car that takes uh, uranium like subdivision just burns all the fuel but that's fine it's just an observation because every point will get subdivided no matter what you know and I think about what it would be like if subdivision did not get every point or subdivide every face you know what that would be like but then you would see areas getting subdivided and then converging into tries because that's all you can really do with such things 
let's place one loop and let's double that loop and we'll just slide that loop in and really think about what we're going for here which I'm thinking we are going for something like this in fact for this area I'm going to try at least protecting this particular loop you know, every piece that we add it just a simple bowl so much business whenever it comes to the subdivision conversion process but hopefully by the end of all these videos you guys should be fairly confident that there's no mesh I can make that I could not also convert to subdivision if I wanted to you know even a solenoid we would just get in and of course the harder we go on it the more that we are overriding the solution that sub D is giving us with just our own topological solution which in some ways is bad but in most ways is absolute control and sometimes with sub D absolute control is the only way to survive it so let's come out and take a look at what we have and I'm going to place an edge here and merge this one at last we can dissolve this and after forming this connection we can almost try the same thing on this side except we do not have a flow happening so we have to make that flow happen and this also breaks some of the cylinders rules as well however we are going to attempt to get away with it so we'll place a loop here place a loop here we'll use the rule of twos for loops instead of threes just because we want to this area is not even that important like once this whole thing's assembled no one will even care about this one area no one will say hey man nice engine You're like wow I put all the time in the world into it you know hit him with Owen Wilson be like oh wow I'm trying to subdivide but I don't think this geometry is what we think it is. I think we're looking at some hallucinations and some phantoms and some ghosts. So I'm going to dissolve this loop. I know, may not be the smartest decision. And let's also finish filling this in. Let's let's undo what we did. And I'm going to place a loop here form this connection and we're just thinking aloud as far as what type of topological solutions we're attempting maybe something like that and we can just dissolve that and so far so good everything's looking quite nice or at least better you know, the subdivision process is an unsung skill. You know, no one will um, be proud of you for having the skill, but it just comes in so handy. You know, sometimes I will go through this process of subdivision conversion just for me to uh, take it to another level where I'm basically destroying the shape and sending it on its way for more subdivision conversion. So for this bottom area, I want to pull it out like so, just so I can go back with box cutter and perform a knife cut. And let's also make sure auto smooths off. We can go in and uncheck auto smooth under box cutter settings. So we don't have to be dealing with that all day, but it's unnecessary. So continuing on, Let's give this one a loop. Let's give this one a loop. This one a loop and this one a loop. And I just see so many opportunities in which we could have took advantage of mirroring to make things easier, at least on each individual piece. We could have union them together in small sets, solved them for subdivision and then merged them back together, which I'm telling you is not a bad proposition like there's so many smarter ways of working with these things some of these videos I'm just 
showing you guys my first take at a solution, meaning that there are alternative solutions available that can be explored. And I definitely recommend that you do explore them because there's there's definitely a better way. There's always a better way, like a speedrunner. You can just optimize and find an even better solution for what it is that you're doing. So just selecting these points and joining them together and Let's just bring these to their nearest areas of relevance, which I assume to be these points where we're converging. And we're looking at something like that for our results. So first things first is we need a loop around this piece. And we also need a loop around this piece just to really reinforce it compared to what we're seeing in the image, even though that's not the most necessary. So. Let's just finish making their connections. We can press E in order to conform to this particular area. And this is what we're looking at just so far in our conversion process. So it's a battle, a never ending battle, but you'll know you're done when it looks like the part. Or in my case, look, like the part ish, you know, close ish to the part. That's good enough for me, you know, to survive the part and to survive subdivision and to survive this month. For modeling and, and subdivision, it's definitely challenging, you know. Um, I don't know if I've expressed that, but, you know, the style of modeling definitely isn't easy or fun. Like I'm supposed to express that, have expressed that more in content, but you know, you get so um, hyped up by the result that it's like, wow, the pain, forget about it. We don't even need to talk about the pain. All we gotta talk about is the fact that this, uh, this goal has been accomplished. So we're just making our connections And every connection we make will just further tie this area off and end its mystery because this is definitely a mysterious area. And even looking at it, the solution is ever shifting in front of my eyes and possibly blinding me. So let's Alt V, look at our wireframe. And there are still some areas that need to be addressed. Like for example, here, One moment. Like I said, I've been uh, listening to some music. You know, I'm, I'm always checking out different bands and stuff just to find out what's happening in the world. And every now and then a track will come on that's just so awful. Just have to end it. I just just can't rock with it, you know. So let's just add our loop, and we begin making our connection. Let's place a loop here, make our connection with this area. And just thinking about how we want to deal with that. For example, we can turn this into a quad, which also one, two, three, four makes that area into a quad, just ending that. So we see that, you know, while the topology looks unorthodox, when we look at the subdivision display, it's, it's a lot more lenient. It's like buffing up our, our uh, image. So let's um, place another loop in here. This loop goes almost all the way around. Now it does. We also could use one loop here that goes all the way around to meet with the other side, but it looks like no such loop is present. So SZ, Control B, and we'll bevel this to bring it up. And whose loop is this? This loop is definitely important enough, but not important enough to end on an end god like we're seeing. So let's actually try it. And then we'll bring this piece down, control B. We'll lift that up. 
and this is what we're looking at so far with our flow. So, you know, if you're here for a perfect all quad flow, you've come to the wrong place. You've entered the um, back door where we talk about, you know, end guns and tries and we try to interject them into our work in hopes of um, receiving enlightenment from what they offer to your shapes and uh, topological simplification. So, you know, if you're caught up on that dogma of everything has to be all quads, I will model you a door and end guns so that you may explore paths on the other side. So let's press E and we will just slide this in bring this piece away just try to tighten it up a little bit if we press alt v and we turn off wireframe we see that the piece is actually suitable so suitable is a personal thing but for me suitable is you know will i feel that the next person in line is going to complain about this model you know the last thing you want is someone saying who who on earth did this model it's terrible instead you want them to um be excited they received it and are about to be retopping your work or cleaning it up. I'm just dancing around this piece. Sometimes I do that. I'll just put on my dancing shoes. I just start working my way around, looking at the points that we are to be consolidating, not so much um, the cylinder itself. So. That means that we can just go in here and begin making our connections, even though I feel that some of these shapes are a little advanced and hurting the curvature. And also we have way too many rounds on the cylinder that scale down so small. So we did set up some troublesome situations that we can be discussing here. And we will just join these, something like that. And for this one, something like that. So just looking real hard at this, just thinking about how we want to deal with our topology. For this one, I've opted to do a slight skew just to have some additional control whenever it comes to dealing with it. But these things are based on personal uh, personal preferences. You know, you might not even have to go as extreme as me, but like I said, I'm always trying something experimental, especially when it comes to all these junctions. Let's merge removing two points so there's two doubles that were just unaccounted for and something like that so it's beginning to come together you know our journey could be over just a, a few stories in our story uh, um our journey could be over um I'm almost out of topics to talk about. I mean, I could just be talking about anything, but I don't want to throw any hot takes in a video that offend anybody or um, are unprofessional. So I have to kind of keep that in mind. Even though there's so many fun things to um, have fun with. But like I said, the uh, definition of comedy is a lot different now. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to make it. And for this one, you know, I was just looking at it and thinking, should we start redefining the curvature? And we probably should at least get in and put our first boundary loop and we'll put our second boundary loop and maybe add another loop back. And that at least gives us the flexibility to get in and start dealing with this. So. You know, you shouldn't even require all 60 of these videos to have my level of understanding of topology. Like it should only take a couple of videos where I'm just talking about Verdi Mergy, my love of Verdi Mergy, <coughs> 
and just how it how it is uh, solving you know like once you understand what I'm talking about with the geometric tension it, it becomes a little more apparent I think but I think I'm the only person who thinks like that but yeah I just see this invisible tension with the mesh and I, I just want to play inside of that tension but there are limits so let's add another loop we are going to right click and make that loop fall short E F something like that and you know after that it immediately starts looking good I mean I'm like peeking my bride before my wedding night because we just tab out of edit mode and we can see that we are set so let's just get in here and think about what we're looking at like for example can we consolidate that can we place a loop form a connection consolidate a connection form a connection make a connection you know it's just matchmaker.com for geometry it's just us getting in here giving these meshes a um a love quiz and then setting them up with each other and notice how the triangles always offset them from the loops of uh, the loops in question let's also make sure our normals are flipped the right way and we see that this area is now merged a little more acceptably how acceptably is a personal question but I am at least going to do something like this which will look a little bit better and we see all these unacceptable just trashy areas and that's us that's all us we just get in we clean it up and right now I'm actually solving around the areas that are troublesome because we can we can come back and talk about those later let's remove that one which will give us something like that and I've just been pondering lunch and what I want to eat for lunch. I think I'm going to have barbecue. I mean, I do live in Texas, so barbecue is like a state food. But if we Alt V and we just get out of wireframe, we are doing pretty good with this shape, despite what it was built from and what it's built of and the battle that it took for us to just get to this point. So. let us think about how we want to handle this so definitely we know for a fact we want to protect our perimeter whenever it comes to this area and we have a lot of points that we need to address and I was just clicking nonchalantly and ignoring all these points that existed that definitely need our assistance all right so let us get back in here and continue on with the work at hand so we're just handing off geometry and then requiring it when we can just to keep things on a level of sanity however i could tell you with this one the solution is definitely going to get a little tight because we just don't have a lot of flexibility on this left to explore and that's fine it just means that we're going to have to extend these points off of our area that's important and try to resolve it quietly in an area where it's just not going to be noticed so the reason I don't know if I should discuss video game spoilers but they killed my horse that's part of what has me here modeling with you guys. You know, I've been fighting this Mongol horde and they went and shot my dang horse. You know, I've seen so many people, you know, pass away over the course of uh, ghosts on um, PlayStation that, you know, it just didn't matter. It's like, okay, another character has died. Now my lead character's ambitions have grown. But man, they hit my horse with some arrows. I was like, come on, man. 
come on. You know, you can hit me with arrows, but you know, don't take out my horse. I had this horse, man. It was like my homie. You know, the game just knew. The game knew what I loved. So I see this second flow coming down over here. And I'm just, it's such a ponder. You know, having two loops so tight together, in my eyes, tells me crease. That's that's what my my brain says is oh that's going to be crease, but that's no that's a general reinforcement that we're trying to set up over there. So we definitely don't need any of that. I'm going to form this connection in hopes that we turn this into something peaceful, but it looks like it's not going to go peacefully. In fact we have left this area for less so let's just get in so we have two points there and for this one we have this one out of bed so I debate on if we should just close the case like so and we'll see how much that decision cost us. For every decision costs us something. And we'll just offset it just a little bit. Let's grab these two and just form a connection. And it looks like we're just kind of going back to placing this particular loop. And this area, you know, the chances of someone actually seeing it are just so minuscule, but I'm telling you, that's my that's my uh, mental thing. Is um, I get obsessive when it comes to geometry. In fact, having this flow that we're seeing is just not going to work. Something like that could probably work a little better, but We're just looking at it and thinking about how we can solve this and consolidate it in an acceptable fashion without having to get all crazy on the surrounding areas. But at the end, this is kind of the solution that I see right now. So we have our flows pretty well set, except for some of this loop density that's happening. For example, we also have a redirect happening here, which is causing it to flow in a slightly different direction. So we could get in here and start working on overriding it, but is it worth it? You know, even is this worth it? You know, just turning those back into quads. We really gotta look at this in front view and look at which side it is that we're talking about. And let's just continue on with the model because that's the biggest loser of time is over obsession with areas that are not even gonna be looked at. So let us press Control B and exit box cutter in edit mode. You know, if, you're not, if you don't need it, don't have it, at least at this time. And we are just sliding areas to their nearest junction points, which means we can get this party started. In fact, I wanna make that jump all the way there, but I just know that's not the best decision. So let's do a meet cute with these two. And this means that we can add one more loop just for reinforcement. Someone left me a comment saying I should change the name of reinforcement loops to something else that doesn't sound as um, on the on the point as uh, reinforcement loops to that I just say um, I, don't, I don't care what you call it just use them or don't use them also this this flow may not even have to exist anymore uh oh receiving messages you know it's that time of day when I get popping I get a lot of uh, private messages of people that are just like, um, hey, what do you think of this? What do you think of this? Um, you know, my only response is, you don't need to please me. You need to please yourself. Does it look like your vision? Yes or no? 
also if the answer is yes you know step back and ask yourself what your vision is but the only person you got to please is yourself in 3d it's, it's your it's your career but also you know focus on improvement i mean i'm pretty obsessed with improvement where to the point where i'm like analyzing my own growth just to make sure that i'm continuing on the path that i wish to be on but you know my goal is to at least learn something every day so you know every area where i'm sitting at there's just books all over it so i can just grab a book during a loading screen and get some knowledge you know as ty lopez would say so looking at this area the merge isn't absolutely atrocious even though the topology isn't the best solution like i said experimental solutions is what you're going to see when you come to this channel but we are so close to concluding on this and because of the density of our cylinders we get so much more flexibility whenever it comes to playing around with it all right and this is the last area that's really catching my ire. This part isn't even connected. This part also isn't connected. So, you know, if we look at this, sometimes people ask, why do I have two sets of stars next to each other that could just easily be quads? The answer is I didn't do it, Triangulate did it. But we just go in and fill it and it's a done deal. So, you know, when I see them, it's not so much a red alarm situation. Just, you know, going to have to get in there and deal with that. So let's look at what we have here. We have something like that. Keep in mind, this we're just solving the piece that we need to merge to another piece and then solve. So our journey, never ending. You know, this is a pressure washer from heck you guys but zero zero regrets you know he's trying to keep the dialogue for this video also um, a little more tame you know sometimes I feel like uh, I get a little off topic I worry about it so trying to keep it a little more more focused you know less jokes about Afghanistan you know, I don't even know if I got around to making fun of BuzzFeed, but we'll also leave that out. I'm pretty sure they're dead now anyways. Look at me. I'm already making fun of them. Can't stop. All right. So let us look at the bottom and begin solving some of these uh, final pieces. So I'm just looking around. You know, this is like one of my favorite phases of a model is the... Um, I was going to call it the Perus, but it is. I'm just... Just prowling. I'm on the prowl looking for a. Yeah, you know, I almost want to offset it till it's perfect. And that's not perfect, but it's definitely better than what we we're just looking at. For these pieces, we can also do the same thing where we basically clear those out, grid fill, remove it, grid fill. And you know, I wish that we could just use grid fill and just select a face and it just replaced it, you know, deleted it. Tell you, if I was uh, dealing with Blender as a whole, I would get weird with it. We, we would um, pioneer something, something special together, but we would have to take some of these things that Blender already has that makes it great and just combine them. You know, there's so many things that just needs to be combined. Blender's just a big mixing pot waiting to um, have a chef hit it. And the good news is that, you know, the CD I've been listening to finally got jamming. Like, I was so worried that I just picked up eight artists of a stinker, I mean, eight albums of a stinker, you know, which happens. Sometimes you end up the stinker I was listening to man that reminds me I almost I miss <laughs> sometimes I'll listen to a CD so many times that I'll either hate it or just fall absolutely in love with it and that's how I feel about Deep Sky now I almost don't like them 
except man it's just that 90s 90s techno you just can't miss out on it so i'm gonna go for these two little holes let's just turn these into circles and roll it down to something that will solve because we're not barbarians and we can just add a loop in the middle of each of them and we'll press GY. We could have also used EM macro, but vanilla tools, vanilla tools, they're there for you. So from here, we can just make these connections. And if you think I'm gonna work like that, I'm not, I'm gonna press Control T, Alt J, but we see that it doesn't work like that. So I have to use even more clicks to fix having to make that choice. And so you also might be thinking, well, what are you gonna do about the backside? Are you gonna do that all over again? And no, no, I'm not. Of course I'm not. But we do have a little bit of a uh, snafu here that we created a little problem, but you know, we can just move past it. So let's say I did want to place this on the other side. Well, I'm just gonna select all the way to here, grow this, delete, and let's turn off Verdi Mergy for a moment. And let's just try to grow this. It will shrink it, grow it, grow it, grow it, shrink it. I'm real weird. I'll grow it and then shrink it and then grow it. So let's just shift D, bring it over to the other side. We'll press Control M Y to bring it out on the Y and then let's bring it out on the Y again till it fits here and we're good to go except for the fact that you know we do gotta we gotta merge by distance also fix any normal issues happening and get any near points at least to their destination because there's always a few and that's where you know being able to select holes in your mesh just comes in handy because just like that I was able to select it flip it over to the other side and we are we are done skis or at least um, done to this level you know we could always get in and refine our topology more and more in order to you know reduce triangles and turn things into quads which you could do it if you want to but I do ponder it's absolute necessity especially when we look at it and it looks fine I mean if we turned on the matte cap for car paint it's another story however our goal is merely to survive subdivision but we definitely see any mistakes that we made showing up very brightly on the surface very shiny so let us go back to studio and just take a look at it and we see that things are looking fine so we're holding ourselves to a little bit of a lighter standard because you know subdivision requires perfection in order to get perfection but you know some of these um near miss survival cases are also worth talking about enough for me to see this as a workflow worth exploring and just looking at it and just analyzing and thinking we might slide that one up and everywhere where we did this, we can see it get a little bit of compromising on the smoothing, but we are seriously being over analytical with this shape. And we should just Alt V, look at our wireframe and just admire the fact that we, we survived this. And let's come out of local mode. We've been in local mode so long, you forgot that we are actually talking about this mesh. So let's now merge these meshes together and we do our final solve, which will be the solve from heck. Um, however, how bad of a solve could it be? Let's look at it. Let's take this mesh and remove triangulation on this mesh. We have mirror, mirroring it to the X axis. We wanna go ahead and apply that. And let's also increment this by one more file, just because who knows what's about to happen here. Let's union them together. And you know me, gotta, gotta check the results, gotta understand exactly 
what's happening. Also, looking at it like this kind of tells me how water would be flowing through this thing, or I guess water and pressure, but this is now our result. So let's take this time to apply the mirror modifier. Let's check for holes. These are all the holes that are now being reported on this mesh. In fact, And I don't even, you know, part of me is pondering out, you know, in my head, I'm like, why did this area get unmerged? This area wasn't even part of the process. This area was probably solved from the last time we dealt with this file, or I didn't check. So one of the two. And also, it chose to do this after we performed this Boolean union. So it's definitely trying to make a fool out of me and cause me to have to do this on the opposite side as well. However, because I remembered what just happened to me, we can get in here, find our edge. Let's merge it last, merge it last. And that means that we can basically perform these connections, you know, tying this off. So more likely what we're looking at is something that was overlooked last time I was working. But this is our chance to finally get it right. So let's select these two points, J, shift tilde. And they're saying that these areas aren't merged. So let's finish merging. Shift tilde again. And I, I'm beginning to get some flashbacks of when we were dealing with this part before. And it was just not very fun. You know, I don't know if you guys remember, but I definitely remember modeling this part. And all of these areas were kind of in the way of themselves. So. Let's right click, subdivide, merge at last. And I feel like Blender should have some sort of um, merging together of non-merged geometry that's like overlapping slightly in order to help these sort of situations. If it's gonna be a thing as a result of exact, let us just jump it up. And we see that we are now on our way to just getting through these holes. Kind of good I jumped to another file because, ugh, what is this? So I am going to subdivide and subdivide. And that's going to give me one point, two point. And if we look at this with shift tilde, we now only have one area with a hole. So if we look at this, it's like, why does this area have a hole in it? Who did this? I didn't do that, but you must be vigilant whenever these sort of things happen because otherwise your mesh is just going to look inadequate, but it's definitely important to, you know, have an awareness of what's happening with your mesh while it's nice to just, you know, throw it in the oven at 350 and forget it. You also need to uh, make sure that that's a chicken in the oven. So shift tilde and we are now merged up. And so finally, we can just solve and wrap this ordeal. So what are we merging? This was the piece that we made. This is a new connection. This is a new connection. And with my vertices all looking like um, old cherries, <sighs> gotta, gotta hype myself up for this, guys. You know, every time it's like, into the war. Also, I should definitely sort out some lunch. I think I'm just gonna have pizza. Pizza will hit the spot with its hard crust and stuffed cheese. Now I might have to pause the video and order it just so I can um, give myself the mission criteria of finish this model before pizza arrives. With the um, 
failure criteria beat me with the failure being I'll uh, continue working and not eat the pizza immediately when it arrives. So let's just, we're just sliding because of Verdi Murchie. It's a done deal. You know, whatever's going on, it'll merge and clean up itself. Something like this. In fact, in a way, my current workflow is almost inspired by the existence of Verdi Merchy. I mean, maybe it was there in 7.9, but I probably just wasn't into it as much. But, you know, seeing so many doubles in this current age. All right, just I had to make sure that we're, you know, we add a big, a big edge like that. It's going to get wild, so. And also we could probably use some sharpening to basically mark everything. And then we can just grab what we are working with and isolate it and really get in and deal with this without we don't need that this is what we need so we are literally working our way but we want to be in vert vertex mode of course so and also we do not have a flow happening on this side for both ways. So we're just going to begin cleaning up some things. And once knife stops snapping to verts, I actually just go free with the knife. Normally that's where you should end the knife and keep going, but I'll just keep going like here we see knife didn't snap I will just I'll just roll with it so something like this we will bring these areas over And let's add a loop. We'll consolidate to this area, dissolve this, maintaining our quad flow, at least around the area of importance. And definitely gonna have to make some hard decisions whenever it comes to this. Let's also Alt H and just bring everything back so that we can Just thinking about what our combinations could be or should be as we're working our way through this. And we have all these like uh, very dense termination union junctions coming up. So I'm debating on if we should just give it its own loop that's very tight around this. But if we do that, we break my rule where I was talking about not having loops be so dang tight. In fact, we could slide this away slide this away as well and let's actually form a connection at least with that area and I know it looks a little experimental but we are born in experimental we are merging an entire flow in that was uh, not optimized for it so let us continue Let's form this connection. And I knew this part wasn't going to be easy. Um, like yesterday, I was going to do a tutorial on this, and I was like, ooh, I think I'm going to just lay in bed. I think I'm going to lay in bed. I'm going to just lay in bed, you know. But now, I can't lay in bed. We're, we're nearing the end of this event of subdivision. So, 
for that, I gotta gotta do the stuff I was um, wanting to do. So I don't even know if I like that flow that I just created there, but we do need something going along the back and having this flow definitely wasn't going to be a very smart decision. In fact, this flow also isn't a very smart decision. Let's double check, make sure there's no holes in this shape. And we'll press K and just begin working our flow ever so closely along this edge. So we get something like this. So I'm almost over to the other side, which means we are free on that side. And all we have to do is just make the connections and then make sure there's some solving happening because this area is on the back, yet I care enough about making sure that this edge is reinforced. And what sucks is that with this particular part and all that we've done, we can't press alt X and just mirror it and start shaving work off. You know, we're, we're, in a, we're in the adult world now. So our only choice is literally to get in here and treat this mesh proper. And that means that we gotta think about what subdivision is gonna be doing after the fact. And because I'm not using creasing at this time, uh, at least on a uh, permanent level, we will also need to um, solve how things union together. Which is why we're dealing with all these loops for the uh, transition areas, because once we have those nailed down, um, everywhere that's flat, it'll probably just fall right into place, really uh, basic. Just sliding these points over. Let's grab these two and form a connection. Same with these two, something like that. And then from here, we are just finishing up these connections, but it is nice to see these connections make their way across now, especially because I know what, what it means. You know, once we solve all of this all the way around and this area, we are done. You know, we have so many points that we've created for this. Um, 19,000 points is what we're rolling with right now. Let's check that. 9,000 points, sorry. All right, we jump back in, pulling out our samurai sword, looking at what we have to deal with. We've already solved all the way around to this side, meaning that just getting out of this side alive and getting over to the final side is our immediate next goal. So GGE to make it even. And I should really use the uh, space mouse more for positioning because this thing is just perfect at getting you positioned when it comes to 3D space. You know, if I wanted to really just get in and look at every single one of these little angles, just a matter of me reaching over and just grabbing this little thing and just dog sliding my view into exactly where I need it to be. But it's taken me a while to uh, really integrate it into my way of working because my hands are always on the keyboard, but you know, that's just me slapping it with one finger, one finger and I could just continue rolling around this particular surface. So just looking at this and thinking about what I want to do, let's pull back and you know what I'm going to do. Something unsatisfactory. Something dishonorable to our way of the samurai. 
and that is consolidate. You know, consolidation is always my first thought. Like, even at the expense of topology, sometimes I will consolidate just because it is so useful for controlling subdivision and also controlling geometry. Like, the simpler your geometry is, the easier it is you to control. But the more geometry you have, the more control you have. So it's like a, a conundrum. I have something like a, um, an old grandfather would tell you, you know, it's like a, like a poem, words of wisdom. So continuing to move around this shape and we are just working on both flows at the same time. Double therapy. Let's grab this one and remove it. Let's bring these two in. And we want to maintain that flow. And I keep just slapping the little control stick on, on the um, space mouse with one finger. Just something like that. Cool thing about this mouse too is like it comes with a game. Not not saying you should get it because it comes with a game, but it comes with like a like a mouse based utility game that you know you use in a uh, kind of CAD application for part placement, and it really demonstrates the capabilities of the mouse. I should play it on video for you guys sometime, just to uh, demonstrate how proficient or not proficient I am with my mouse. Ooh, we lost we lost where we we're at I hit the wrong button I tap tilde dang you tilde and we're getting really um, experimental with our solution but I can only hope it'll pay off because a lot of these areas are just we're going to be looking at this piece as a whole but if you look at it as an individual you know as every individual cylinder you'll be like yeah you know there's an issue here there's an issue there but for the most part as a whole it's like wow how did you even make this whole object and that's really um, what we're going for so just removing some points just to simplify things even though not the most efficient topological solution on display, but let us just do an anime style recap of us just perusing where we've been and where we're aiming to go. And we see that we started a little bit on that side, but now we're coming around from the other side and we can, okay, loosen a little bit of control here. There we go. Okay, this song is terrible. All right, so sometimes you listen to a musician's discography and you're like, yeah, I get it. They went through some stages, but I'd be listening to some of these artists and uh, hit stages in their discography where I'm just like, what happened to you guys? Did y'all lose all your, I would expect you to lose all your fans right here. You know, when you're completely moaning on the track, I'm out, I'm out, man. I ain't got no time for that. You know, I start writing tracks, moaning about polygons. Like, oh my God, look at the shape that we have to deal with. You know, it'd be my two hour LP, MX and the, MX and the polygons, you know. But we're just having some fun here because we are done. Not, not completely done, but we're done at least with that particular phase. Um, still got a debate on lunch. You know, I'm like a big fan of Italian. I'm pretty sure most of the videos where I talk about food, I start talking about my love of, of spaghetti. I mean, or, or spaghetti. You know, spaghetti's just so great. But, you know, you gotta give, you gotta give them the bread, though. You know, if you start cutting things out of a mill, it just goes awry real fast. Like, if you give me some french fries with no ketchup, I will get so angry like 
That stuff makes me want to go back to a drive through place and throw a drink through. And not that I'm the type of person who would do that, but, you know, french fries without ketchup are just, just bland. They're so nothing. And I love french fries. I mean, I love mashed potatoes too. I'm not going to put ketchup on mashed potatoes, but, you know, mashed potatoes is just a different consistency. So the rules differ. But whenever it comes to french fries, yes, please give me ketchup. And also, you know, don't, don't be BSing me in the drive through line saying, yeah, it's in the bag. It's not in the bag. You know, and that, that makes me feel worse, you know, when I have to check and then confirm. Like, there's been a, um, a unfactual sentence presented here. Just kidding. But, you know, now we have a bunch of bottles of ketchup in the drawer, so we'll never get taken away. That's that's my monologue about, about ketchup. But just thinking about food. And now you guys probably are too. And we're just getting in here, solving our topology. Enough. Enough. You know, if you want to solve it perfect, have fun with that. Solve it. Solve it all day. All day solvers. Solving cases 24-7. Get in there and solve it. Not, not even talking smack. Just saying, you know, everyone has different disciplines to them. Maybe you're the type of guy who has to solve absolutely every single piece of geometry ever. You know, I feel you. If you're like that, let's play Tetris together sometime. But we are seriously looking at a Dunzo point. So for this piece, what if I wanted to make it easier? And you're like thinking, how could it be easier? You're about to do that same painful process again. Well, I mean, we could select both pieces, press I. We could select all these pieces that comprise this side of the connection. We could also press I, which will give us something like that. So now we've at least established our boundary loop. However, that boundary loop is so unattractive. In fact, what's going on over here? Like this area is just, geez. <laughs> the last area is going to be the hardest area. Just kidding. Let's get in here and we solve it trivial. We're gonna solve it like it's a joke. It's just a joke. So let us just begin dissolving some edges, begin consolidating. You already know what I'm thinking in the back of my mind. Simplicity. We're going to solve it with, with a little simplicity. We're going to hit it with the old um, one, two, buckle my shoe strategy. If you're not familiar with it, um, it was discussed a few videos back. But basically, we are going to just get in here and just keep it simple. Because we know that if we get extra it's just not going to work out. Also, why is this vert not sliding? Is there something crazy here? GG. All right. Oh no. Uh, I was having a fever dream. All right. So continuing on, we are just going to begin merging. Just getting things to their fair destinations. And yeah, I'm probably going to have to time lapse this video due to the amount of time that it's taken, but there's just no ifs, ands, or buts about it. This is a, this is a part. This is, this is one of those hard parts, is how Goofy would say it. Um, you don't even want to hear how Daffy would say it, but I'll spare you. But yeah, this is a horror part. And then, uh, Max, we're going to see Powerline. <laughs> Sorry. Um, watched a Goofy movie recently, and it is... It is still very campy. So, continuing on, we are just... Getting in here. Thinking about how we want these unresolved endings to go about meeting each other. For example, that one doesn't have to meet in those circumstances. This one also doesn't have to meet in these circumstances. So slide, 
slide and we could slide here and slide here, which means that we are going to have to add a loop and consolidate that one loop away because we can't have it happening on the junction turn area. And I know these are really, I mean, I'm making quote unquote hard decisions. I know these aren't easy calls to make by any stretch, but someone's got to make these calls. And I know what the alternative of these calls look like, which is why I'm making the calls that I'm making. But even that is going to cause subdivision to hit this thing with a degree of shrinkage that just, it's no good for anyone, but I can live with it. Also having a try on a turn of a cylinder, you should know by now that that's going to be a knot. That's a knot in the head. Just um, like my cousins would say, that's a, that's a neck. And then it would slap you on the neck. So we just got to, we just got to roll with it because we could have these on the exact same level and then merge them like so just giving this a redirect similar to what we did with the area that we were talking about like 30 parts ago but to really wrap this we now have to hmm i'm just going to worry about this side too you know i was about to just ignore it and begin talking about wrapping this video but Let's not rush to the end. And maybe something like that. And we want to form this connection, which will send this part all the way through here. And so we have this thing, you know, protected. We have this area with somewhat of a good topological redirect. However, who did that? Which one of you? Did that to my mesh. Let's right click. And instead of getting a loop in there the way that you just saw me try, I'm going to Alt W, use box cutter again. And we're just going to force a loop exactly where we want it. We'll dissolve one loop, bring this up, maybe straight up. That way we can get rid of any degenerative points. Form this connection, form this connection, and I know, not the prettiest, but I'm always thinking about how I can simplify these sort of things. And even that simplification isn't the best because I still want to grab this all the way to here and bring it down in order to just really relax what we're about to be doing with the stress on this particular area. But it almost doesn't matter because we are done. You know, we are pretty done. We let's press shift tilde, see what's left. And from here, let's come out of local mode and look at what we have. We could press alt H to bring back everything. And we get back a little bit more than we bargained for. But let us slap this with the level of subdivision and we see that everything holds together fairly nice. If we get out of wireframe mode, we can now just select this all, unmark, so that way subdivision's actually handling it for the first time ever. And we have created our part. There are obviously areas that we could improve over and over and over for the rest of the day until we get it absolutely perfect. But in lieu of this entire pressure washer and this thing just being a motor that's gonna be looking something like that when we look at it, is it that important? You know, that's the philosophical question, but at least we have now survived the process of converting this very, very painful piece. And if we want to have some fun, we could also put threads on this side. But instead of doing that, let's bring in the piece that is from right here on the reference image. So I'm just going to control S save. And we are going to just open the hose connector. So right here. And let's press Alt H to bring back anything extra. We're just going to move that to a collection called Chunk. So now we have this. We have our collection of junk, which was just stuff that we made over the course of trying to make this particular thing. There's a video on it. And we could just call this Hose Connector. 
save the file. Let us open up the file we were just modifying. And I'm just going to choose link. And we're going to link in the connection of hose connector. And we'll just scale it down, see how it connects. And then move this into position. So if we want to get it absolutely perfect, we can just grab this point, cursor to selected, selection to cursor. And now we have placed it and just scaling it to fit. We are now looking at this with this piece properly attached. However, I see that this area is a little bit wider. So let's actually go back in the original file again. I mean, I know there's a lot of jumping back and forth, but we're just having some fun here. And I'm going to just grab this loop, all of these loops, S, Shift, and C, just to bring this in enough. S, Shift, C, maybe a little more. And let us go back to that file where we've already placed it. And we see that now it's a little bit bigger. So normally you would have to um, edit length library or something to go in and make changes. I also was thinking about putting this arrow, but I feel like with that, we are truly pressing our luck. But we do also see this area that's a, a bit of a curiosity. So we have modeled so many threads that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's just make one more 10 threaded shape. So this is our cylinder. We're just starting out at, let's see, how many verts is this? 32, let's delete it. And we'll bring in one with, um, yeah, 32. So we're still back where we started. We'll delete these and we're just going to give it 10 edge loops. I'm looking at the counter in the bottom of the screen. And so with this, we're just going to V rip O, turn on proportional editing, which is right here. And we're just going to move the top section up until we're just about to modify the bottom. And then we'll stop and move it up ever so slight. And if we get lucky, Verdi Merchie will grab it. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. It tells you if you're going to have a good day or a hundred years of bad luck is if Verdi, Verdi Merchie grabs it. So let's grab this. We are going to deselect the first edge. And every time I do this, I, I just change it up a little bit. So, but not, not too much, just a little bit, just enough. So this time we are just going to bring these up and we definitely want to reinforce it, but also we want to Maybe do something like that so that way this at least jumps to the next junction area. EZ, SZ0. Same with this, EZ, SZ0. And let's say we want to reinforce our loops. Well, that's where we place a loop like so. Let's press F and flip it. Let's add one more loop. But we see that because of our previous loop, it actually makes this a quad, allowing it to jump all the way out. And the same thing has actually happened on the bottom, which now is just so predictable that I'm just used to it. So let's press E, F. So we position it to the other side. And I'm just gonna grab this one, slide it in. And we can just dissolve this point and begin just solving everything we're seeing. So maybe to solve this into quads, we will just do something like that where there's a loop down the middle. And so up here, let us try that same thing. We're just going to do that, which gives us this as our shape. And you know, every time I change it up, subdivision treats me just a little bit differently each time. But this time, subdivision has given me just a little bit more data about what will happen with that particular type of loop. Let us grab all of this geometry, S and Z, just to scale it down. And just wanted to see what that would look like. Let's also turn off subdivision. 
and we're just going to hide one side. And just try to select just an opposite side of the loop. It might be possible, it might not be. Let's try just grabbing it and growing it. And we're just going to pull one side up. We're just trying to make them just a little bit thicker. So that way we can scale it down to be appropriate. But, you know, like I said, accuracy is never my number one goal. You know, that's someone else. You probably want to look for a mechanical engineer for all of that. For me, I'm just trying to model the part on a prop level and survive to the end of the day. Where hopefully I'm not uh, receiving all my stuff in a box and being told to leave. So we extrude this down and let's grab all of our edges. Control B to add a boundary loop. Because we close and open a different instance of Blender, our bevel settings got reset, but it's fine. Let's also take this, bring it in, and we'll also bevel it. So we get something like that. And RX90, and we'll press Shift R to repeat it. I want to snap it to here, so I'm snapping my cursor, and then Shift S selection a cursor and my cursor is not showing because I have it disabled sometimes I just feel that um, you know me and my cursor have like a uh, unspoken connection where I don't even need it to be displayed in order to know where it's at because you know the moment I snap it I have my general assumptions about where it, where it is gone so let us just slide these two edges to just crease that a little bit tighter and we're just adding this piece on and let's go out and look at this in perspective mode. Let's Alt V look at our wireframe. And we have now modeled the full assembly, at least for the motor part of this. However, I see that there's even more parts that can be added to this motor to just add additional pain. For example, we could add these circles that I see in the reference images right here. And that would just be a whole nother talk about pain and agony, but for now, let us just Alt V, get out of overlays, and just take a look around our part and just take a victory lap because we have modeled this motor, which when I originally saw this, I was like, man, F that piece, that piece is terrible. But now we see that there is a way that it could at least be done that's relatively straightforward and the result doesn't look half bad. You know, there's always additional refinements that's able to be had. For example, right here, there's either a mesh artifacting issue or if we press Alt V and we turn off shadow, we see that shadows are also causing us some difficulty. So with this area, let's tab into edit mode and take a look at what's going on with the geometry. And we see that not everything is solved to an adequate level. For example, if we slide in this loop, we can bring in a loop on the other side and just form their connection and do the same here. And this should get us a much more satisfactory solve for this particular area because we're just letting end guns have its way. And like I said, we could just be at the solving all day till the cows come home, just getting a better and better solution. But at some point you gotta just draw a line. You got to say, you know, this is actually sufficient. This is truly sufficient or it's not sufficient. In which case you got to get in and get to work. For example, with this particular side, I see that there are some improvements that's able to be had. So we might as well just give this area the loops that it desperately needs because just a couple of loops and renegotiation can really smooth these areas out. So, we could be going all throughout this, just kind of redefining all the areas that are deemed insufficient for a proper subdivision solution. But all in all, we have accomplished the objective and we could always just get in and continuously refine this until we get to absolute perfection. But this side shows what it looks like with just a few seconds of cleanup. 
versus just being whatever on the geometry. So I tend to get really obsessive whenever it comes to certain areas where I value their important or value their existence over other areas. And so I'll just do everything in my power to make darn sure that they exist. So not saying it's an attitude worth adopting, but it is a strategy that I employ in my work where sometimes if um, it's underneath the belly of a Mac, you know, who's going to look there? The pilot? The pilot's not even a real character. So with that, you would just do what you can. And so with this model, we have definitely did what we can, but we also were able to very successfully convert this into a subdivision version of this mesh despite this actually being comprised of end guns and us having to go in and baby every single connection so with that i will at least wrap up this video i thank everyone for watching and i'll see you guys next time